If you're suffering with a fungal infection and it's causing your hair to fall out, you need to take immediate action. Now in this video, we're gonna look at three types of fungal infections and how it impacts hair loss. Then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how you can combat these fungal infections naturally to help you regrow healthy hair. So make sure to stay tuned to the end. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. If you're new here, we create science-backed YouTube videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. So if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. So what you're gonna learn about today in this video is we're gonna look at what fungi is, we're gonna look at the different types of fungal infections that can cause hair loss, we're gonna look at dermatophytes, we're gonna look at fungal infection due to dermatophytes, uh, we're gonna look at the risk factors for tinea capitis, then we're going to talk about how you can distinguish between tinea capitis and other scalp conditions and we're also going to look at ringworms treatment. So first things first, what are fungi? Now fungi, singular is fungus, are eukaryotic single-celled or multinucleate organisms that decompose and absorb the organic material in which they grow. They include yeasts, mushrooms, molds, smuts, rusts and mildews. Hair infection by fungal agents is scientifically known as trichomycosis. The study of fungal hair infections has gained importance over the last couple of years due to the following reasons. Now, human uh, trichomycosis is a major concern due to cosmetic hair loss. Severe infection by fungi can cause inflammation, which may result in disability. And vellus hair infection in other parts of the body, other than the scalp, may cause chronic recurrent infections that can make life difficult for victims. So, how many types of fungal infections can cause hair loss? Fungal infections that cause hair loss can be broadly categorized into three main types. And these are dermatophytes, uh, malassezia, agents causing piedra, and so we're gonna look at each of those now. So dermatophytes uh, directly invade the hair where they can inhabit the scalp and grow. Their, their ability to inhabit and grow on the hair can be demonstrated by the hair bait technique. And this involves placing sterile hair in a container with soil where the dermatophytes present in the soil show the affinity for hair by immediately evading it and producing colonies using hair as a substrate. Some dermatophytes can also produce perforating organs in the hair shaft. Now, dermatophytes invade the hair stratum corneum, elongate and multiply, and then enter into the hair cortex as intrapillary hyphae. The hyphae cannot go beyond the keratogenous zone of the hair and remain there in, in form of a fringe called Adamson's fringe. It is within the uh, keratogenous zone that hyphae produce spores that appear as crusted plaque-like lesions on the scalp. Then fungal infections that can happen due to dermatophytes include tinea capitis. Tinea capitis is the most common fungal infection of the scalp and it's also called ringworms. Though the condition usually attacks children between five to 10 years, it is present across all age sets, especially in males. Now, the risk factors for tinea capitis uh, include sharing hair, shaven, uh, sh sharing hair shave blades with a large number of people in pilgrimage centres, mostly in unhygienic conditions, also sharing of fomites like combs, towels, hairbrushes and theatre seats with infected people. We've got physical contacts with pets that serve as habitats for zoophilic dermatophytes. Uh, having wet hair for a long period of time, fungi thrive best under moist conditions and major minor scalp injuries. And symptoms can include uh, round bald patches on the scalp, severe itching of the scalp, brittle broken hairs that are shorter than the rest. Uh, the bald patches may appear red and scaly in serious cases, uh, grey patches uh, and thickened boggy swellings. Now how can you distinguish between tinea capitis and other scalp conditions? So most scalp conditions are associated with similar symptoms, which make it very difficult to identify a particular condition just by taking a look at the affected hair and scalp. Although an experienced dermatologist may be able to easy, easily diagnose ringworms, the best approach involves scrapping the affected area with a blunt scape scalpel. The harvested hairs are subjected to microscopic viewings and the presence of spores is considered as positive diagnosis. Now, in order to treat uh, ringworms, we recommend first thing is a a topical treatment. Now, topical treatments applied in the right amounts have been found to effectively get rid of ringworms and they include shampoos containing the various ingredients on the screen right now. It is important to note that topical treatment by itself is not considered to be sufficient. However, any commercial shampoo that contains 0.02 parts of ketoconazole has been found to be very effective. 
The shampoo should be used for a period of up to eight weeks and topical treatment has been very successful and especially in children. Next, you've got systemic treatment and it's often required so as to cure tinea capitis within the shortest time possible. The drug most commonly used in this category is griseofulvin. Physicians recommend doses of 10 to 20 milligrams per kg of body weight. Just like with topical treatments, the drug should be used for a minimum of eight weeks, though your physician may dictate otherwise, depending on the severity of your infection. Now, what can be done to minimize the risk of tinea capitis? It is imperative to avoid sharing of fomites like combs, hairbrushes and hair clothing, even if no one has been infected by tinea capitis in your family. Pets like cats and dogs serve as hosts to ringworm causing fungi and should therefore be kept clean at all times. You want to avoid sharing hairbrushes and combs with anybody suffering from a fungal infection. You should, purposely, uh, you should purposefully wash your hair with the approved shampoos at all times. They contain ingredients that can kill most fungi. Next, we're going to look at Malassezia infections. Malassezia are lipholic yeasts that derive their name from the discoverer who successfully isolated them from dandruff in 1889. They have been found to play an important role in the pathogenesis of Pityariasis capitis, a mild form of seborrheic dermatitis of the scalp that accounts for 75-85% to 85 in seborrheic individuals. Currently, there are 12 known species of Malassezia. So we're going to look at uh, Pityariasis capitis. Now, molecular studies have suggested that M. globosa as the most common pathogen responsible for Pityariasis capitis. Dandruff manifests itself as itchy reddish brown patches on the scalp. Statistics collected by the National Institute of Health indicate that Pityriasis, Pityriasis capitis has a worldwide prevalence of between 2 and 5%. Now, large numbers of Malassezia yeasts invade hair follicles distended with keratin. Confirmation of an attack by Pityriasis capitis can be done by experienced dermatologists. Demonstration of spores in the scalp is considered confirmatory. Special stains are used to visualize the spores. So does Pityriasis capitis affect both men and women equally? Though the condition affects both sexes, it's more prevalent in men and usually attacks them soon after puberty. Dandruff scalps lose two to three times more hair than non-dandruff scalps. So risk factors for Pityriasis capitis and dandruff include extreme weather, poor hair hygiene, stress and fatigue, recovery from cardiovascular conditions, age and having a very oily scalp. So what are the uh, what are these symptoms of pityriasis capitis? Itching followed by scratching, a flaky white or yellowish scales in the hair, a scaling rash on the scalp. In serious cases, red patches may develop on the scalp after obliteration of the hair. Uh, in order to treat this, you want to use shampoos containing the active ingredients that you can see on the screen right now. Next, we're going to look at piedra. Piedra is a Spanish word meaning stone. The condition is characterized by black and white nodules located near the base of the hair follicles. In serious cases, the hair breaks into small bits. It was first described by Biegel in 1865 and has been classified into two types. You have black piedra, and this type thrives best in tropical conditions. It is caused by a fungus called Piedrea forte. Its unique symptoms include dark stony nodules at the base of hair, in severe cases, a metallic sound is produced by the nodules during normal combing of the hair. Also, we've got white piedra. It is caused by a species of fungus, and unlike black piedra, white piedra can attack other haired areas of the body, not just the scalp. The disease has been diagnosed uh, around the pubic area in both men and women. Its unique symptoms are creamy whitish nodules located at the base of the hair follicles, hair on the affected section of the scalp appears shorter and brittle, and there were two main favorable factors for piedra infection, including applying plant oils or wet or semi-dry hair and high humidity. How is piedra diagnosed? Under black piedra, diagnosis is considered positive if brown spores are found in the hair. Mature nodules have eight visible ascopores characterized by presence of flagellum at each tip. On the other hand, a positive diagnosis for white piedra is confirmed if the hair contains groups of spores located on the affected areas of the scalp. The spores can have varying sizes. And to treat piedra, you can use a topical application of the various substances you can see on the screen, and these can be effective in curing fungal infections. Your physician should be in a position to recommend the most appropriate choice. 
The black piedra can be successfully cured by oral use of turbinifine. On the other hand, oral itraconazole provides effective treatment of white piedra. Physicians may also advise you to clip the affected hair uh, so as to facilitate penetration of drugs into your scalp. You should also avoid moisture as much as possible. So now guys, I'm going to share with you some homemade remedies for fungal infection. Besides topical and systemic treatments, there are several homemade solutions that have been found to be equally effective in treating and or avoiding fungal infections. And we're now going to discuss the main ones. Uh, first we've got castor oil. Now applying castor oil all over the scalp can treat and reduce fungal infections. You should note that for efficacy, castor oil needs to be applied regularly as it is not a quick fix. You should avoid applying the oil directly onto the affected area of your bare hands. Instead, use latex gloves for this purpose. Be sure to rinse off all the oil after 15 minutes and you should ensure that all hair strands are washed properly with plenty of cold water. You could also use antifungal shampoos. Now shampoos containing uh, zinc and selenium sulfide are also effective fungal treatments. You should apply the shampoo and then embark on massaging the hair strands and the scalp. Remember to give the scalp a gentle touch to avoid scratching of the already loose hairs or causing injury to the scalp. Five to eight minutes are considered enough for this form of therapy, although the time spent in this exercise might depend on the extent of infection. Again, antifungal shampoos do not offer you a quick fix and hence should be applied regularly until the infection is secured. Preventative use can be less frequent. Now, a few tips on getting rid of fungal infections from the inside out. Now, optimizing your diet is practically the only long-term solution to regrowing lost hair caused by fungal infections. The first thing you can do is remove any yeasty foods from your diet. This includes alcohol, bread, anything fermented and mushrooms. Also removing any processed carbohydrates from your diet. Um, these typically ferment in the stomach, causing a host of other problems. Ideally, follow the rules of food combining when eating meals. This means that your food will digest much more easily. Alkalize your body as much as possible, and this helps to lower DHT levels and will help your hair regrow. Now to conclude, as you've seen from the research data, fungal hair infections are real and actually cause hair loss. Dermatophytes and malassezia could be considered to be the main causes of fungal infections compared to piedra. In most cases, these infections do not directly cause hair loss. It is the intense itching and irritation that may tend you to force you to scratch your hair. Diagnosis of all these infections should involve a dermatologist as some of the symptoms appear across the board, therefore making it quite difficult to undoubtedly identify and confirm a particular infection by just physical inspection. Apart from clinical treatment, there are several homemade solutions that you can turn to so that you can help you fight fungal infections. I cannot stress enough the importance of good hair hygiene. So guys, quite a long one, but we wanted to share that with you on fungal infections. Remember, if you are new here, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.